Uh, here I have a Proton CD player, AC300 Mark II by the look of it. Not sure what era this is from, but fairly old one by the look of it. Made in Taiwan, so I'd say that's quite old. Looks like it's mostly Philips ICs in this thing. Not sure who actually made Proton or whether it was an offshoot of another company or what the story was. There was a bit of their gear around sort of in the 90s or probably early 90s. But um, yeah, didn't see a lot of it where I live. A couple of inspection quality control labels there. Now this has a couple of issues. It actually seems to play a disc all right. I have tried it out. But um, the two issues are this display. It's kind of like the multiplexing is running slow on it or something. So I think that's meant to be saying 20 tracks. Sometimes it, like here, track one seems to light up fine. But then when you start playing it, you get all these lights blinking. So these displays are normally multiplexed, which means they're sort of scanned. They, they run different segments or different displays and then different segments of the display like the E or A or B or C, D as they call the segments in the seven segment displays and they sort of will address one display, turn it on while at the same time say putting the E segment on and then, the, and then just flick to the next unit and flick a display and it's just a constant flashing of each segment but it happens so quickly that to us with the position of vision they basically look like they're lit up all the time. So much like a, a light globe running off 50 hertz AC or something. It's technically flashing 50 times a second, but you can't tell. It just looks like a solid light. These do something s similar, but it is interesting that sometimes, like when we go to the 20 there, it's actually solid. And when we get, get track one, it's solid. And I think that's about the only time. You can see the four flash up there. Yeah, you so quickly see each track. That's seven, I think, eight. I wonder what happens when we pause it. Not much. So it's almost like the multiplexing's running slow or something because it should be operating much faster than that, but whether that's the actual fault or not, I've got no idea. The front panel on this is kind of all faded as well. And the other issue is it doesn't want to eject. I think when I hit eject the first time, open close, it actually just stops the disc and then you've got to give it a bit of a hand to get it out. But it does seem to load alright on its own. I do have the front panel a bit loose here. And yeah, we get that 20 up minus one segment. Interestingly, that segment never seems to light up. Yeah, if I keep it changing disc tracks, it it kind of stays right as soon as it starts playing the track. But there are parts of that first segment, the lower part actually seems to never light up. So there's something missing there. So it could be an interesting one. Actually, got an electronic fault, but it does seem to play the disc all right. So at least the laser and everything seems to be running in it. I did quickly pull this off and have a quick look. I was thinking maybe just this microprocessor type chip here was running up these segments to the display. When you actually look here, there's some sort of driver chips. Often there should be something and another big chip there by the look of it, even though it's only got a few pins connected, hardly any. And I must admit, some of the solder joints on this don't look the best either, so maybe I should go over those, but not sure they're an issue. It might be worth resoldering a couple of those chips. But it could be something to do with the power coming in on this board. Or, yeah, one of these chips. I don't know if they're addressing the display. Normally you'd have like a, you'd have a common cathode or common anode on the display and there'd be a transistor for each segment of the display or each, each digit as such. Not the segments, but the, the segments as in the parts of the seven segment display, they're all wired together and addressed individually. And then the common cathode or anode, whichever one it is, I think these are mostly normally common cathode. They've got their own switching transistor or it could be an IC. And that's basically used 
to sequentially switch each display one at a time. So by addressing a particular segment and a particular display, you get say part of the figure eight on one dis display and you might have that segment off on the next display and then it sequentially goes through building up the the image that you want but it really it's just each segment on each display flashing all in sequence kind of scanned out almost like a television picture or something and it slowly scans segment here segment on the next one segment on the next one and goes through and through eventually building up the whole whole number on each one I might give that a quick resolder I guess maybe even take this board off and have a look it's got a heap of screws in it Let's see what we've actually got here there we go so I've got an infrared receiver there got a CD or well, it doesn't matter about the CD just a 4052 chip that's another CD5054052 chip. There's some Proton chip here. That's the one with hardly anything, so that's got a little ceramic resonator on it. A little 4 megahertz one, so that's, that probably is some sort of microprocessor kind of chip. Now, there's no real easy way of... See, the, the seven segment displays have got hardly any pins. There should be enough, should be seven for the um, individual segments, in, excluding any um, decimal points and stuff. There's actually four, if we take out seven, we've only got three, as if it was three segments, so unless it's got some other connection, so it's probably even more complicated than that, the way it's connected. Oops, I pressed on that bit of foam there, and that's all disintegrating. Plus we've got these other LEDs are obviously run off similar lines. Now some of these look like they just go through links back to the this white connector. So these may actually be ran from the front panel or the um, sorry the front panel the microprocessor or something like that. One of these big chips. rather than so that's all the, the deck connections with this mab8441 that looks like the micro but they each has got its own crystal ball look at it that's possibly a memory chip i would say m5m4416 something like that so several of these one of them goes back to this so that's the other led So one of those LEDs is hooked onto the pins of that, which is interesting. Then that's hooked the other LED to some sort of common line, maybe. So that LED is multiplexed. It must be in in line with the rest, with one of the segments or something on this display. The other ones go through a couple of links back to this white wire. So there's one, two, three at least that go through links back to the white wire so I wonder if they're the common cathodes or anodes for each thing but there's just not enough connections here really do these other little chips is that one of them I'm not actually sure what a 4052 is so it's got like three pins joined there another one there could be power or something Yeah, that hooks onto one of these pins it's got two pins possibly hooked to that go back to the white wire so that's quite a complicated mess basically i did have a quick on, look online and couldn't see any of these a manual for one of these anywhere other than if you paid to get one okay so i've removed the display completely it turns out it's actually got this chip on the back so that could well be what is the actual problem rather than these Philips ICs so I may have been blaming them unfairly I'm now at the CD player without the display in it running and it seems to run fine Thank <laughs> you.
The chances are these other LEDs are, um, are running through that display, I think. Yeah, they go to pins on the display, so that chip may well have been running them. So it's hard, still hard to tell whether it could still be rubbish coming out of the, the Phillips chip. The fact this has got a few missing segments, I'd say it's likely in that, that little chip starting to separate off the board or something. It's kind of like a little super thin bit of fiberglass PCB and then been soldered down to the actual backing of this LED display. Might remove that horrible foam off this thing. And just check the joints look all right and stuff, which they do. So it could be LED segments have failed. It could also be quite likely where this chip is attached to the circuit board. So maybe it's this display that's at fault. Still a lot of connections if that is a multiplexing chip. I mean you'd think then it would have like an I squared C bus or something coming in plus a couple for voltage. Doesn't explain the number of pins on this. But then I guess maybe if you add in some decimal points and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be connected to anything. Those two I think are definitely connected into the circuit. So we've got four, eight, ten, twelve pins that look like it's got used. That's quite a few. I don't know if I can find any info on this display. I'm not going to have a look and see if that part number comes up with anything on the internet. Yeah, when I put this into a search engine, it looks like it's an LTM 85638 or 636 LH-01. The company Light On comes up for a lot of LTM type displays, whether it's related to them or not, I don't know. This is obviously so old, there's no record of it anywhere. Feels mechanically quite tight, so I'm assuming the belt's slipping, but... It certainly does not feel the greatest. Transformers humming a bit. I'm assuming that's got something to do with the deck coming out. So hopefully it just lifts out backwards, but there's no guarantee here. Maybe I should have left the front off. I don't know we can get it out. Or up. Big difference between up and out, but you know, the plug is not in the best. Cable ties lives. Now here's our belt. It certainly doesn't look the best. If that isn't slipping, I'll be very surprised. Let's try winding it by hand just to get a feel, but now that seems fine. And I think it's time we give this a bit of a dusting out. God, it's got a whole other board under here, so quite a lot of chips, so it must be a pretty early one with that much circuitry in it. And my god, oh, it's actually got a Phillips style laser in it. This might even be some sort of Phillips mech, but... I don't think it is. Unless it's got Phillips type torque screws in it or something somewhere. So this is largely a, oh you've got to be careful with the edge connector there and the motor if we unwind these wires should give it a bit of length. Oh yeah it is a Phillips mech I think, 3104102 Sounds very much like a Phillips part number to me. This actually says Compact Disc Industries Co Limited, Servo-4DC. Got a TDA chip, a TCA chip, which from Motorola. Little JRC chip. Song U M V O. Sounds a bit Taiwanese. 
and this chip it actually is a Phillips under there but it's got something some label on it here I see the Phillips just be careful with that little edge connector there don't know what that is but, but yeah we've got the um, is it radial laser mechanism actually runs on an arc much like a, a speaker voice coil type setup in a round magnet there but yeah I've not seen one of those for a bit so these are proper Phillips so I reckon this deck part and the laser at least are Phillips not sure how easy it is to get the tray out and have a look from the other side but I'll say this board is not probably Taiwanese like the rest of the player few potentiometers here probably should have looked to see if they were labeled on the other side I'll just have a quick look before I put it back together because they're not labeled on this side whether they're focus offset tracking offset something like that uh, probably is laser power but it says labeled laser and that's labeled focus so yeah I don't, I don't, maybe this laser doesn't have a laser power on it yeah, I can't see a trim pot on there so that must be the laser that one there's the laser power and that one over there is something to do with focus might as well have a look I guess while I've got it apart but I guess the laser out of it could be useful for something I don't think it actually had a part number there in any obvious place, but that could fit some of the earlier Phillips Marantz type stuff. How do we get this off? There's not much holding that in there, but does it slide to one side? Oh, I can't because it's sort of clamped in the middle between two things. Ah, uh, it looks like it pushes down maybe. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so it's just a spring. Oh, there you go, you just push it down and slide it to the side, and bingo. So, there's our Phillips type of laser. So, it just sort of swings around a bit, doesn't really have a stop position. I guess I probably won't have to get out of clean while I'm here. But, yeah, quite a robust old mechanism by the look of this one. I think the Phillips lasers and that actually lasted rather well in these sort of CD players. It was just all the electronics that usually let them down. I'll give the platter a quick clean. Nice little aluminium one, not a cheapo plastic one like most of them. Although they did often have a bit of steel in there as well. CDM 4-31. That might be a Phillips CD, CD mech number maybe that 480 32 411 is something to do with the part number it is a kind of i don't like the way this drawer sits kind of loosely it's somewhat plastic the mechanism when it comes to the drawer and stuff there's only a single beam laser tracking most of them used to show off about being a three beam laser tracking. So I'll put that in, push this down. Oh, where did it come? That one come out of the top, I think, and then yeah, down and yeah, so you put that one just in sideways into the top of the thing and the other one down underneath. And it goes in fine. It's just about the warning about the fuse to protect against fire risks, invisible laser radiation. And our other little problem here is, yeah, let's put a new belt in this thing. See that belt's been sitting in the same position for a long, long time. Motor doesn't sound the happiest. Hmm. 
It might be meant to be like that, but... Whether it's worth just putting a little bit of oil in there, it probably wouldn't hurt. Where's my screwdriver? I'll just put a drip on this. Little precision, oops, it dripped off before I got there. Typical. That's a little bit too much, and I'll just get that across and put it under the pulley. That's instantly quieter. That probably was a little bit dry there. It's not much bigger than this pulley, I don't think. It naturally, see, it naturally sits on the pulley, so it's a little tighter than ideal. Uh, I don't think there's anything else, because that's a Phillips mech. You don't need to really lubricate anything on the laser normally. That's swinging around in there nicely, absolutely free as. It's not like the rails with the sort of linear lasers. I think there was some sort of radial tracking or something they called it. I remember rightly. Uh, now that one went over here, I believe. Big connector there. Yeah, why won't that go back in? Yeah, it's just a bit tight. That one come over this side. The signal one from the laser and magnet assemblies and stuff. Motors. Well, that's probably your motors. That'd be your loading drawer or something motor, most likely. Oh, guess I should put the screw back in. It doesn't really matter one way or another whether I do it now or later. I don't have to do it while I think of it. Again, make sure you turn the power off because that fuse is live most likely. So they often put these dangerous little boards up in the back of these audio gear, audio units, and easy to hit hit that with your finger. Squealy when it gets to the end, that should stop. Is this switch not? Well, that's one of the switches. Maybe there's another one. Oh, that switch is the down. That must be. Yeah, it's a double position switch, but it doesn't seem to... Oh, yeah, that's... So that's just when it goes in. It squeals a little bit there, so there must be another switch in here. Well, that's why I don't screw it back in, because then you have to take it out again. Because it's not happy. We've got the motor, we've got one switch. That seems to be it. How does it know when the drawer's out? So that's open. Start the motor up, goes whipping along. And see, so then that drops one bit. Let me see this again. That drops that switch. So the switch is shut. No. That switch just operated before, I could have sworn. When the mech went in. So the mech's out, so that's, that lever moves now, so that... Well, it can't go anywhere else. It's, oh, it's only when it's up. Very odd, so that drops, but the switch can't go anywhere. It's only got a single contact. Maybe it's meant to operate like that, surely not. It 
the fun of learning how the mech works. Now that's that's the stop position for our suspect. Even that's a little slow and could do with the contacts cleaning. But it does stop eventually. So how the hell does it know to stop? Contact's not connected to anything, so that can't do anything. Don't know, that's a very odd design. I wouldn't mind trying to give that a quick clean. There's some micro scrub here, if I can fit it in there. Just. Seems a bit hesitant even when it goes in. to switch off the belt slips right at the end as it's about to hit the switch and that's definitely slipping there like it's driving when it shouldn't be Design. So we'll lift that up, it doesn't squeal. It hasn't fully gone in. <laughs> well, that is an odd one. It's only one switch to operate the motor. Almost thought there should be a second switch there. That's exactly what it looks like. They've made it, it was originally made to have a second switch and this is meant to push down on it. So where the hell did the second switch go? <laughs> or do they just let it squeal and just time it out after a while? I think that's meant to operate the way it does. Someone has taken, I'd say if this is originally a Phillips mech, they designed it to have a second switch so maybe our friends at Proton decided they're just going to pull a dodgy there wouldn't surprise me and maybe they've just got like a timer running so that it when it's in eject mode it just runs for a certain time and then stops but it's running a bit longer than it actually takes to get the deck out and then that makes the, the belt slip it certainly plays better than most CD players just a shame the display is going crazy so one disc with like holes right through it something's eating through it scratched to hell and it still works and this CD isn't much better but not a problem tracking stuff Yes, it looks like this, the laser and it's really good. Just let down by this dodgy display. And probably one of the world's dodgier loading mechanisms, possibly. Very odd design, it just hits the end and then the belt slips a bit on eject. At least it seems to stop squealing on the load now that I've cleaned the switch. Sure they didn't come out of the factory like that. But who knows. Very strange design. But, 
seems to be a goer. Except for the display, she's actually one of the better running ones I've tried. Yeah, so a bit of a waste of time. Got a free Ben Harper CD with it, which didn't sound like anything I'm going to listen to, so I can go in the bin or go to someone else. But that was a bit of a waste of eight dollars, but it does actually play CDs really, really well. And if that laser fits another unit, I guess it could be used for spare parts. Pull the mech out of it and the laser, which seems to be still good, and toss the rest of the electronics away. I mean, it looks pretty horrible with that front panel, but interesting to have a look and see, but I'm, I'm, I'd am i say 90% sure that is the actual display that's faulty rather than any of the chips feeding it. But I'll probably never know for sure, unfortunately. Thanks for watching.